Psalms 133, a song of degrees of David. Behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. And you run this verse back to 1 Peter 3, 8. And brethren, well, he's, David's talking about the Jews. No battle amongst the Jews. For the Christian would be those that are saved. But the dwell is they're dwelling in their land. Be together under God, which they are not. We read in Jeremiah that eventually they get into false worship and the priests are wrong. The rulers are wrong. And you know there's like today every most everyone's wrong, but there are a few people out there who are doing right and doing what God wants them to do. There is no unity. We've got the United States today united under sin and not God. You just might as well just take off in God we trust, because that is not true for the nation. And what is the unity? For the Christian, it is the love that God commands us to love one another and to help one another. To be together under the Bible and what the Bible says, and no matter what nobody else says, but what God says. To please God is the unity. To be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is unity. You got in churches today, there are lost people. And those lost people are the friendship of the church and, and helps of the church and all that. And that's not unity because they're not saved. Unity will be one day when that trump blows and we're all called up. The dead in Christ and those that are alive and remain. Unity will be in the clouds for one time in the entire world history will all Christians be gathered together. And forever to be with the Lord. It is good for the church and it is pleasant that everyone get in the word and do what the word says. Keep the lost out. And I mean not witnessing to the lost, but don't let the lost person have a stand in the church. And take a stand on the word of God. That is pleasant and that is good. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Now that ointment is found in Exodus 30, 25 and verse 30, and Leviticus 8, 12. The anointing was in Exodus 29, 7. It was present for Aaron, I can assume that, he is the first one that God ordained to be the priest of all the priests. As Aaron stood or sat there and the vial of oil was poured upon his head and he just let it go. All the way down to his skirt. Now the Jews had the long beard so that thing just went right through the beard and right down into the skirt. And when I read the commentaries, oh, yo, it was the top of the skirt, not the bottom. What does it matter? It just says skirt. And it says skirts. So you need to go back and find out what the high priest was to wear because it's a plural skirt. That was a time that Israel now has a priesthood ambassadors of God that's not today I know we're called priests but we don't sacrifice animals Christ was our sacrifice Christ was our high priest Christ went in with the holy veil heaven and offered his blood 
But for Israel, for David's point of view, this is the beginning of who we are as a nation. Yeah, there were priests surrounded in Cana, where David is. Moses' father-in-law was called a priest. But here is a priest under God. There are many priests that run around the world today. And in Revelation 1, it records, I am a priest. I don't advertise it. There are people, I got a, a thing on the Facebook the other day from a person uh, I know who say, is, will you pray for this other person? That's the priest. I will offer prayers. As we get into Luke, we're going to see Zacharias is offering incense. That is prayer. I am not to take anybody's animal and cut, cut it open and put it onto a flame unless we're going to have a barbecue. And that's not for God. And the Baptist churches have got it wrong because you don't see anywhere where you sacrifice a chicken. But they will. For, uh, for fellowship and entertainment. I'm sorry, I've seen the Baptist fellowship. I've seen where all these people come who've never been in church. And then walk out like nothing's happened. And Jesus said yeah, in John chapter 6, you came for the food. As the dew of Hermon, which is a mountain, a fruitful mountain, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, Jerusalem, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life evermore. Verse 2 is the beginning of the priesthood. The tabernacle is built. The priest's clothes are made. Aaron is anointed as the priest. And verse 3 is the natural. Verse 2 is man. Moses anointed Aaron. Verse 3. Who can make do? Only God can. That precious pure droplets of water in the morning. And what is it? You picture the little drop of dew that falls upon a leaf and it rolls down the leaf and bends the leaf and until it hits the ground. One that man has ordained and one that God has ordained, but they are both ordained by the authority of God. Now, what is it that it is like as to do that for brethren to dwell together in unity, it's a good and pleasant thing? What is it? Number, uh, verse 2 is you got authority. Anything that has two heads is, uh, is evidently that will not have a long life. And when you got a pastor and you got a deacon board, that's a two headed monster. You got to recognize that God has put in an authority in the church, which we're talking about for us. In the nation of Israel, God has put a group of people called the Levites and then priests. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And on top of all that, there is one high priest. Now you go back in the wilderness and look at Korah. Who do you think you are, Moses? We're just as better as you, and you put your brother as, as a high priest because he's your brother. Well, we're your brethren. And look at the commotion. Look how many people died in that judgment that God passed upon them. They outright rebelled against Moses. You need to realize that good and pleasant unity of the brethren is to realize that there is somebody in authority that God has set. Now listen, I said that God has set. 
if you got a worldly church and, and that Jesus is on the door on the, at the door knocking to get in, don't you tell me that you know that guy is sent by God for God's goodness, for God's graciousness. God will put people in authority, but Satan will have men in the pulpit too. And no, no one assert my authority or, you know, do, what's that verse over there in Psalms? Do my prophets no harm. That's not you, buddy, if you're doing wrong. But you are in a good church that loves the Lord and doing right and got the right word and all that. Let your pastor be the pastor. Verse 3, the, the, the naturalness of God that we can't control. The dew that, it's not rain. Dew is not rain. It is small little droplets. Rain is a lot of droplets. There are going to be a few people in the church that are going to be a beneficial, that are sent by God, that are pure by God, that God has given specific talents to do. Let them do what they're supposed to do. You're not going to have a rain, a storm of people in the church. You may have a lot of droplets in the church. But well, it's going to be the few that do that will do something. Too many raindrops can flood. Not enough rain will cause dry. You need rain, of, of droplets of people in the church, but there is that precious few gods do that are pure, who, who confess their sins, who read their Bible, and do what they're supposed to do. And you know what? How many of the population ever see really do? Unless you get up early in the morning. Otherwise, for most of the people, they don't see it. And a lot of people are not going to see the true believers and those that love the Lord, but they're going to do what God has provided for them to do. And that will be good and pleasant. And God will be pleased. And yes, there'll be complications, there'll be strifes in the church and all that, but get over it. Confess it. Get right and get walking in unity again. The Lord commanded the blessings ever, life forevermore. And as far as Israel, they are at odds right now with each other. They don't even know who they are. They're not even doing what they're supposed to. They are outright rejecting God. They are not in unity. Until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Until he descends upon the Mount Zion. Pure. Righteous. Coming in the morning. Well, that's when Christ is coming, in the morning. We're in the night right now. And when Christ comes, the second advent is in the morning when dew is coming. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think 
that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim my God.